Hello and welcome to our One Life Church devotional series. We cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Galatians chapter 3 and Psalm 8. Now, in Galatians 3, we explore the Jewishness or the Jewish roots of our faith. Paul starts by saying, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? I mean, he's really getting their attention. And then he says, Now, let me ask you to consider something. Don't throw your minds away. Don't be foolish. How did you get saved? How do the miracles happen? By observing laws, by becoming Jewish. I'm standing outside the Jewish club here in Durban. I've just landed. It's a little bit windy. Probably not going to be able to spend too much time out here talking to you. But you see, what Paul was trying to do was stand against this teaching that had come that you needed to follow Jewish tradition to be a Christian. So he said, well, let's go back to the original Jewish patriarch, Abraham. He says, listen, Abraham believed God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. So uh, Abraham was pleasing before God because he put his trust in God. And he says, those who have faith are therefore children of Abraham. Now he's referring here to both Jew and non-Jew. So he says, well, now let's go back to the law. So he says, let's look at the law. Clearly, no one who relies on observing the law is justified. You didn't become Christians by following clever rules. He says in verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. How did he do it? Cursed is everyone who has hung on a tree. And he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles. You see, so you've got this patriarch Abraham who believed God. And God said, I'm going to bless you. You can read that blessing in Genesis 12. And then so you might ask yourself, well, if that covenant blessing is over Abraham and all his people, this is what the Jews believe, that we've got it through bloodline. Now, Things changed when Jesus came. Jesus came in that bloodline. And the promise of, to Abraham was that out of you, someone is going to come. And he says it's here in, in, um, in verse 16, the seed of Abraham. In other words, a son of Abraham. And he says, I'm not talking about seeds, this is plural. I'm talking about the seed. And that seed, meaning one person, he makes it very clear in verse 16, uh, is going to release the covenant of Abraham over everybody who puts their faith in Jesus. So then he asks the rhetorical question, well, why was the law given at all then? Why were the rules put given at all? If it all was originally about Abraham and his faith and us and faith, why the law? He says, because yeah, the answer in verse 19, it was added because of the transgression until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. So until Jesus came, the laws were put in place saying, listen, uh, live this way. If you live this way, you look like God. And verse 21 says, uh, is the law therefore opposed to the promise of God? He says, absolutely not. Verse 24 says, so the law was our guardian, was like our custodian, like our, like our principal, like our headmaster, until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. So until the coming of Jesus, the law sort of held the people of Israel until Jesus comes and then Jesus makes a way that all nations, because that was the blessing of Abraham, through you all nations will be blessed. Verse 25 says, now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God by faith. So this is the most famous verse in this chapter. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Verse 29 says, Abraham, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You, like Abraham, are included in the great family of God. So this society of Jews here, yeah, we are extremely grateful for them. Because for hundreds of years, for thousands of years, they held the promises of God. But then they delivered Jesus and Jesus made the family of God open to all of us. Now Psalm 8, which is one of the most famous praise psalms of the Bible, David starts by saying how majestic is God, how beautiful is his name, how mighty is he. And he uses words like this, through the praise of children and infants, you've established a stronghold, you've ordained praise, some translations say. You've heard that before, haven't you? When Jesus was coming to Jerusalem and people were worshipping him and singing and the Pharisees didn't like it, Jesus quoted this verse actually. He says, from the lips of children and infants, you have called forth praise. And so he was basically saying, David had spoken about this. That children, infants would praise God. He's actually saying, I'm God and they're praising me. That's what was so scandalous about him quoting this verse. But David, in a sense, was, was saying, 
children are only going to only going to prophesy and praise God the Father, but Jesus Himself. This psalm also ends with David saying, "God is majestic." That's how he starts it and as he ends it. But in the middle, he has this little refrain where he wonders about how God has made mankind. And I think he was looking up to the stars because he says, when you consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, what is man that you're mindful of him, human beings that you care for him, that you've made him a little lower than the angels? Now that word angels is Elohim. So the very accurate translations who go right to the original will put God in there. God made him a little lower than God. Some... Uh, rather nervous translators let's put angels there rather than god i don't know why but they, they have and you know interestingly uh paul when he was talking about the return of jesus quoted that particular verse uh, saying remember jesus came as a man and the whole of mankind has basically been made in the image of god like god and david says how amazing is that incredible psalm great way to worship and praise jesus